Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Mike Glover from Black Rifle Coffee Company. Today on Pro Tips, we're talking about how to apply a tourniquet. Most of you probably don't carry tourniquets because they're not that convenient. And also, they're not that very cool. Like, they don't hashtag well, right? Hashtag tourniquet TQ never did anything in social media. But I will tell you that carrying a tourniquet statistically is more likely to save your life than carrying a pistol. So if you understood facts or science, you'd be into carrying a tourniquet because extremities, which are highways for blood, if compromised, whether it's femoral, brachial, they could cause you to end your life. You simply go to sleep and never wake up. I take it serious in carrying a tourniquet because I've been involved in accidents. Also combat, that's a thing, right? These actually come from combat and they, we've come a long way since the beginning of the global war on terror, but they're applicable to civilians because in my own civilian life, I've come across people who had extremity wounds and it might be you or your family members that you have to treat. So let's talk about the tourniquet. First and foremost, this is uh, Philcraft Frontier. This is one of my company's uh, American made, made in the USA, leather lines. Uh, that's a TQ holder. Now the reason I would make something like this is because if you're a rancher or a farmer or you're an EDC kind of person, you might carry this because it's more convenient than sticking an uncomfortable tourniquet in your pocket. You're less likely to carry something that's life-saving if it's not convenient and not comfortable. Look, I, I kind of placate and cater to that because I want you to carry it. If you stick in your pocket and you're like, ooh, this is uncomfortable, not gonna carry that, well then it defeats the purpose. So we have holsters, uh, we have holders that carry this tourniquet com comfortably and conveniently. So let's look at the tourniquet in its totality. This is a North American Rescue Cat 7 tourniquet. There are a couple versions of this that I recommend. One, the Cat 7, which is the new generation of the North American Rescue Tourniquet, which is N-A-E-M-T certified. Don't worry about what it means, it just means it has a higher level of compliance when saving people's lives. Uh, this is also a tourniquet that I use in combat over nine rotations and then many rotations in, as a contractor. Also the soft T wide I recommend as well, uh, made by TAC Med Solutions. And we carry them both. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is undo this. Now I want you to understand principally how a tourniquet works because if you understand the principles then you could use your imagination and try to treat your own life uh, when potentially you're bleeding with using something on your person, like a shirt, like a belt, right? We have to be ready to adapt and improvise just in case if we understand principles. So in principle, it, this is a circle. This is meant to treat and stop bleeding via your extremities, your arms and legs. It's very simple. Don't apply this to your neck. Um, that's gonna happen somewhere. So if you use this tourniquet, it's in principle stopping bleeding by causing pressure to be applied by turning, in this case, a windlass that allows you to turn this rod and then constrict the blood flow with equal pressure in circumference. Now, when I was in the military and the infantry in the 90s, yeah, I'm old, um, we used to use cravats and sticks. There's really no change to this except it's just better made. This is your stick, this is your cravat. Um, in the Civil War, they used to use these things on the battlefield and also to stop the bleeding to be able to, to uh, sever the extremity when they're doing surgery for extreme wounds. So in principle, if I understand that, I could use my belt, I could use a shirt, I could use whatever I have at my disposal that follows these principles. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to use this North American Rescue Cat 7 applied to my arm, which applies to the leg as well. There's a couple ways to uh, stash this. One, I could keep the loop. Uh, two, I could remove the loop. I like the loop for upper extremities. Why? Because likely, if you're wounded, check out my leg, imagine my left leg is wounded, I'm not gonna be able to do this, which people do during training. It's just not realistic. So for leg likeliness, let's say I'm traveling in my motorcycle. I'm gonna to have tourniquets that are stowed uh, without the loop because the crush injuries of hitting the handlebars is likely to be the most common injury. So I wanna keep it stashed so when I undo it, when I'm laying in the fetal and I'm hurting, I could uh, 
skip a step. I don't have to worry about that step. In this case, this is upper extremities that stash this way. I wanna be able to apply this with one hand. So in this case, my right arm is injured and I'm going to take this and apply it through the loop. This red tab is always gonna go in towards the heart, on the leg and, and towards the crotchal region. So crotch or heart, this goes in. The reason being, it's very simple, if this was turned the opposite direction, then you would have to pull away from the extremity and you couldn't get enough reach to do that unless you have really weird long arms. But this way, I only have to pull it across my chest to save my life. So I'm gonna go up high as possible on the extremity without getting it on the shoulder. In this case, I know this shirt is massive, but so is my arm. Deltoid, try and buy. I wanna put it in between the deltoid where it meets the try and buy. Even if the wound is super low, I wanna bring it up as super high. This whole two inch thing, it doesn't work for anybody. Um, and that's like a life lesson. All right, so if I take this tab, pull this, one thing that's important here is I have to set this on my arm to be able to turn the windlass. If you start too far out and you go to pull it in, you're gonna get friction, you're gonna get that, right? So I need to start it on the inside and rotate it this way to where I need it, and then I cinch it down. So I, don't, I need it a little bit further, that's where I need it, and then I'm gonna put this Velcro all the way around. Now I have access to this windlass. This windlass that I turn, I'm gonna turn clockwise in this position until I stop the bleed or until it hurts a lot. Like that's the right answer, right? So my arm's so massive, so I'm only gonna get one. You notice how this gate is open. This gate has to be open. If you stow it closed, imagine with bloody hands, under stress, maybe flipped upside down in my car, I'm trying to like get this, move this, unstow this, turn it, and then reset it. Don't do that. Keep it open. Worst case scenario, uh, uh, I can't close it. I could at least monitor it, monitor it. Wow, I can't even say that this morning. We're gonna have to put in the subtitle, Julian. That's a subtitle. Um, then I can grab it, stow it once turned. Uh, an indication that I stopped the bleed in training as well as real life is do I have a radial pulse? If you have a radial pulse, well, blood's getting through, which is pumping through that pulse, which is why you feel it. I don't wanna feel that. I don't recommend doing it for long durations during training, but a pulse ox meter or a measure of your radial pulse is a good indication if you stop the bleed in training. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. And let's talk about one final thing. Look guys, when we're applying a tourniquet in training, we have to do realistic training. A comfortable environment is a thing because you have to get technically proficient. But make sure that you introduce stress, alternate positions, different environments that include increasing stress um, that are gonna help you navigate this world. When you apply a tourniquet to yourself in real life, it's not gonna be comfortable and cozy. You're gonna be upside down, you're gonna be in the fetal, laying on a street, trying to save your life. If you're lucky, you have that opportunity. So train like you fight. Turn off the lights, do it with one arm. Um, do it with your eyes closed with one arm in the fetal position. Uh, if you can get your vehicle on a rotisserie, turn it upside down and train that way. Don't do that, but you get my point. We want to train like we fight. And in this case with this, it's not going to be your best day. It might be the worst case scenario. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that pro tip. PhilCraftSurvival.com because I own it and I'm the CEO. Until next time. Thanks, guys.